All right, so I have before me the Dell XPS 13 Plus and the Asus Republic of Gamer X13, two thin and light laptops on the go friendly with solid battery life. However, even though the X13 has a more powerful CPU and includes a GPU, you can actually get better battery life out of the X13 by a few hours actually. Now, when you have that battery life, you're running only on the CPU. You're not running the GPU. It's on what's called eco mode. Well, eco mode, not e coli, like e coli. Anyway, eco mode um, inside of the X13. So you're not getting the full GPU performance. So just keep that in mind. Now, do keep in mind that you're gonna have a brighter screen on the Dell XPS 13. They're both set at 25% screen brightness during the battery life test, but the X XPS 13 is gonna have a little bit brighter screen. So that's one area where you might lean towards the Dell XPS because it has a little bit better color accuracy, color gamut range, and screen brightness. Now you can also get the XPS in either a full HD screen or an OLED screen. So if you're a digital artist, the XPS might be advantageous to you for that specific reason uh, because you can get better color accuracy and color gamut range. However, the X13 is a two-in-one touchscreen laptop. Now, the XPS is also a touchscreen laptop, but it's not two-in-one. Now, I have seen two-in-one versions of the Dell XPS 13. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of either of the models, I'll include links in the description below. And if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Um, now, the next thing I wanna look at is the build quality of these two laptops. Now, we have an all aluminum chassis with the Dell XPS 13 Plus with this really nice matte, kind of soft touch plastic material on the keyboard deck. And then of course, you know, you see the keys as well. On the X13, we have a magnesium alloy chassis. It's a little bit lighter, but it feels a little bit thinner to the touch. So it almost has kind of a plasticky feel, although it is not plastic. Um, and then of course the keyboard deck is that same material. Now in regards to, you know, opening up the laptops, taking a look inside, you can see that the uh, Dell XPS does not have a visual trackpad indication uh, because it is invisible, okay. The trackpad actually runs from the space bar all the way to the control key. So it's a substantially larger trackpad than the X13. Now the X13 is something I've kind of complained about. I've said it's a little on the small side, especially compared to the latest iteration of the Asus Zephyrus G14. Um, I like that trackpad a little bit better. Uh, it's a little bit nicer, but we still have a smaller trackpad on the X13. So that'd be a winner here for the Dell XPS 13 Plus is that slightly larger trackpad and it just kind of functions better. It's nicer to the touch. Um, the keyboard decks are very similar, full size shift keys. You have arrow keys here. Not a lot of differences, obviously, besides that the keys are much closer together on the XPS Plus. However, the keys are bigger. So it's not like you're like missing keys because they're like small and close together. It's almost like the same spacing because the key is actually larger than the X13 key. I really like this keyboard outside of the smaller uh, back backspace key. For some reason, I kept trying to hit the power button with my finger, which was kind of annoying but that's neither here nor there. Um, so keyboards are great on both laptops. However, trackpad's a little bit nicer on the XPS 13 Plus. Here's a quick sample of the audio of me using both the keyboards and trackpads on each of the laptops. Now, if you're curious about the webcam, here's a quick sample of me using each of the webcams on the laptops. Here is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Dell XPS 13 Plus and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Although the Dell XPS screen looks bigger, it's actually also a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It just has a smaller bezel at the bottom. As you can see, as I lift the laptop up and put the screens next to each other, they're the exact same size. Now, if connectivity is important to you, you're definitely gonna wanna go with the X13. We have much more connectivity on the X13. On the XPS 13, all you have is a USB type C on the left side and the USB type C on the right side. For the X13, we have an HDMI port, headphone jack, you have your Republic of Gamer XG mobile adapter, which also includes another USB Type-C. This is where you can hook up an RTX 3080 
like a, a an external RTX 3080 to your laptop, which could be advantageous for the on-the-go video editor or 3D modeler. On the right side panel, we have another USB Type-C and a USB Type-A as well as this nice size vent. Um, so I really like this one. To me, um, it just kind of packs a little bit more on the feature side. This is gonna be really great for on the go graphic designer or business owner. I think this fits more of the photographer and digital artist because of the two-in-one functionality. You can quickly touch up photos or work on your digital art. Um, I just really like it. Now, if you also use multiple external monitors, this is gonna be advantageous to you as well because you have that HDMI port as well as two USB type Cs. So there's a little bit more functionality on the ports and connectivity in regards to the X13. Now they're both thin and light, as you can see with the results coming up on the screen. So both of them are great on the go friendly laptops. But as I mentioned earlier, the battery life is gonna be better on the X13. Um, but then you also have the GPU, if you wanna get great performance for, you know, doing work once you get to where you are. Now, in regards to the thermals on the laptops, the Dell XPS is definitely the better performer in regards to the thermal temperatures. We never saw above 65 degrees Celsius. Uh, well, we saw 67 degrees Celsius on efficiency mode, but it kept us around the 67 to 65 degrees Celsius range during the 4K export. Now, for the X13, it was not that much hotter, about 10 degrees Celsius warmer than the XPS 13, which is not bad at all, especially for a Ryzen CPU. Ryzen CPUs have been known to be a little bit hotter, historically, but the uh, X13 cools very well. So 75 degrees Celsius on the CPU during the 4K export, really good results there. I'm freaking stoked about the Patreon that we're about to launch. Absolutely. We're launching a freaking Patreon and you should join because it's going to be awesome. We're going to have never before seen content on the channel. Patreon, not channel, channel's YouTube. So why is this content not being posted to YouTube? Well, the answer is really simple. I know that there is a tight group of loyal followers that follow my content. And I want to reward and be a part of the tight, loyal community that we have been building here as we've been reaching 85,000 subscribers. And I want to go deeper with you guys. I want to do live Q and A's. I want to get face to face with you and chat in a live video call with my most faithful subscribers. I want to repurpose that content and put it on my channel so you can then be featured in my channel with me. I want to do exclusive giveaways that I can't just launch to the masses of communities. There's sometimes I get to keep laptops, but I don't need them. And so it's a place for me to basically just give back to my most loyal community followers. Now, if you're curious which one has better speakers for you know your audio experience, here's a quick sample of me using the speakers on each of the laptops. All right, now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks here. Starting out in the simulated benchmarks with Geekbench single core and multi-core. As you can see, the single core performance on the Dell XPS is about 100 points more than the X13. But then as we move into multi-core in Geekbench, you can see that the multi-core performance with the Ryzen processor is definitely more. So if you're going to be somebody who's using a lot of different programs at the same time, that will be advantageous to you in the X13. As you move on to Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core, you see the same thing. The XPS has better single core performance performance, but the Flow X13 has better multi-core performance. So on both tests, we see consistent results. Now, as we move on to Photoshop, if you want a better Photoshop laptop, I would go with the X13. It scores about 130 points more than the Dell XPS 13. Now, another laptop that holds the i7-1260p is the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. I'll do a full head-to-head -head review of the X13 with the Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 if you wanna know my thoughts between those two laptops. But if you wanna get closer performance out of Photoshop with the i7-1260p, then I'd recommend going with that laptop over the Dell XPS 13 Plus. Again, you can watch that video if you're interested. I'll link it up at the end of this one. Now, as we move on to Premiere Pro, looking at the playback inside of Premiere Pro, we have 185 drop frames for 4K full quality playback for the Dell XPS 13. As you look at the 4K playback on the X13, we have zero drop frames. So substantially better drop frames coming out of the X13 with that dedicated GPU. Now, as we look at B-RAW, we have 1,552 drop frames at full quality B-RAW. 
If you look at the test here inside of the benchmark, it says half quality BRAW for the Dell XPS 13 plus, and it drops 271 frames. If I run it at full quality 6K, it just drops almost all the frames. So you're gonna want the dedicated GPU if you're even considering doing 6K video editing on this laptop. I honestly think the 3050 Ti is a little underpowered for 6K. I would go with an RTX 3060. Um, but if you do need to do a little bit of on-the-go video editing, which I occasionally find myself doing and I shoot 6K B-RAW, then this would manage. Um, it's not gonna be a dedicated 6K video editing machine unless you got the XG Mobile to attach and then you'd be totally fine. So just keep that in mind. Now, as we look at the export times for these two laptops, you're going to get better export times out of the X13 by about a minute. Um, so definitely a better export time, especially if you're going to be exporting anything longer than a nine minute clip, which is the clip I'm using for this test. Um, but about a minute of time saved by going with the X13. Now, punch for punch, both laptops are great. The styling is slightly different, a little bit more of a traditional aluminum silver laptop here with the Dell XPS 13. The X13 is a little bit more of a modern look. It looks a little bit taller um, because of the larger screen bezel on the bottom. So it looks more like a 16 by 10 aspect ratio laptop, even though they're both 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I do prefer the larger uh, hidden trackpad on the Dell XPS 13, but the smaller trackpad on the X13 doesn't offend me too much. I wish it was bigger and I wish it was slightly better quality like the latest G14, but it isn't so much as a killjoy keeping me from purchasing this laptop. Now I do like the option of having the dedicated GPU and inside of the Armory Crate Center, I can turn it off for excellent battery life. So punch for punch, I feel like there's more opportunity coming out of the X13 with the extra connectivity, but do keep in mind that you're gonna get better screen brightness out of the Dell XPS 13. So it's gonna be a dimmer screen on the X13. All this considered, which one are you considering? Comment below, I'm very curious because these do have a lot of functionality that is neck and neck. So to comment below and let me know. Otherwise, links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and consider heading on over to the Patreon, checking out the different tiers and joining us there. I'll see you in the next episode.